buttoned up by doting parents, and penguin chicks shed their soft down as they prepare to challenge a deadly obstacle course of both floating ice and predatory leopard seals. It's a torrid season where life and death hang in the balance, and time is your greatest enemy. It is life in the freezer. This 10 News update is proudly brought to you by McDonald's. Mac your day. Hello, I'm Sandra Sully with a 10 News update. Tonight, a major development in the one till collapse. One of the company's founders, Brad Keeling, offering to make up any shortfalls in staff entitlements. Also tonight, the push to limit politicians' superannuation payouts. Privacy fears over raids on a doctor's surgery. First pictures of the woman at the centre of Nepal's royal crime of passion. And fears poker machines are killing the pub music scene. There's some of the stories we're following. Join us tonight for the late news. And then in sports tonight, the National Soccer League has red-carded four clubs for next year's competition. The Brisbane Strikers, Canberra Cosmos and Victorian clubs Eastern Pride and Carlton have been axed to make way for a 12-team competition. Formula One powerboats piggyback style. Two boats came together in an unorthodox fashion while trying to avoid another craft during the World Championships in Latvia. Miraculously, the drivers escaped unhurt, but the race had to be restarted. Also, AFL Rugby League, French Open Tennis, Sports Tonight. Hope you can join us right after the news. Hey, Susan. Yeah. Good. Morning, Susan. Good morning. Have you guys met that new bloke at work? Uh, something McDonald? Uh, uh, it's a great bloke. Yeah. Sausage McMuffin. What? Uh, boy, I sure could go with sausage and egg McMuffin. Yeah. Is a McDonald's breakfast calling you? Great idea, Nick. My Brother Jack, proudly brought to you by Vodafone. Be part of something bigger. McDonald's Family Restaurants, Mac Your Day. And Australian Unity. Welcome to TEN's world premiere miniseries. Next Monday, the multi-award winning Law & Order returns with a mind-bending new case. Now, stay on TEN for the magnificent conclusion to the Australian miniseries, My Brother Jack. My Brother Jack is classified M and is recommended for viewing by mature audiences. It contains some violence, sex scenes and nudity. Previously on My Brother Jack. Jimmy Ridge. In France, of Jimmy Ridge. I saw men drowning in mud. And they were glad of it. Men! Where are you? Get back in! Uh, oh, Pop, that was your last hurrah. Uh, Show us what you're made of. Uh, yeah, I know I want to be a writer. In fact, one day I mean to write a novel. Well, you put me in it. You write well, young man. You're right, very well. He had that blasted contraption out of this house, boy. Darling, Art, did we order a drowned rat? Walked out of home. You'd better be ready to betray everything you're comfortable with. Everything you believe in. What I really want to know is what in God's name is wrong with you. Can't you bear to see anybody else have even a moment's happiness? This is Mr. David Meredith. You'll be joining your ranks as of this morning. Don't try to be funny. I only see jokes by appointment. You tell them bunch of sinless wonders. You're tougher, smarter, quicker than any of them. Yeah, I know, Jack. Well, that's good. I'm glad to hear it. Won't have to beat the living daylights out of you then.
Let's get some faces. There's Grandpa. first front page story. To this day I can smell eucalyptus and tea urns and beer and tobacco smoke at battalion reunions. I can hear thousands of voices singing Kipling's recessional and see the school children with their little square flags chanting on the 25th of April far across the sea our brave Australian soldiers stormed Gallipoli. This one here. Closer. It was always for me a day of mixed feelings. But whatever I felt had to be buried in the required chauvinisms of the story. Good work. The Morning Post was no place for ambiguities. It required one thing only. A hymn to undiluted national pride. I'd like to see this, Mr. Meredith. I've got a byline. We fight because it is a rite of passage, as necessary as the first knuckle in the playground, the passage into manhood. Bylines are earned, Mr. Meredith. Sadly, not often enough. As the service finished, a white pigeon fluttered past the shrine, across the dark sky, and into the coming dawn. You can commence life as a flat-backed turtle, Yeah, right? outstanding. The tour not only gives you the opportunity to see turtles in their natural habitat, but you also get to help scientists from the Northern Territory University research and document their every move. 84, 84. It's in the Turtles usually only come out at night, so it's a real bonus to catch a few in daylight. Can't wait to see what happens at dusk. In the meantime, we'll crank up the barbie and throw on a few snags. Well, you know, you'd pay a fortune for this in some restaurants. Sunset, beachfront. <laughs> it's all right, isn't it? As night falls, the torches come out, and this is when the fun really begins. There are around 50 eggs in a nest, and they usually hatch out in batches, like these little flatbacks. Then, as quick as a flash, well, as quick as a turtle, they race down the beach and head for the horizon. It's absolutely incredible to watch. And of course, when you're dealing with Mother Nature, you just never know what's going to pop up. Even our tour guide, Alan, seems surprised. This is really rare. We're not even sure if this turtle's been captured on film nesting before. This is an Olive Ridley turtle, and she's covering her nest. Nighttime turtle spotting normally lasts a good six hours. If you need some shut-eye, it's sleeping bags under the stars. Good night. As the morning sun hits the beach, we load up the boat and head back to Darwin. Brekkie is served on board, fresh fruit, toast and tea, and it really hits the spot. Ansett flies to Darwin daily. Prices start from $836 from Sydney. Their capacity to care for and nurture their young, to wage war and understand foreign languages, and their ability to communicate their wants and needs to those around them. They, of course, all draw striking parallels with our own lives. Ultimately, each individual, whether they be ape or human, has a place on the social ladder, and it's how we interact with others that determines how high we can climb. 
Tonight, we examine how brute strength, politics and strategic alliances help to grease the wheel when forging successful new relationships. And to that end, we go on a blind date with Binti, an eight-year-old female gorilla who's about to meet the man of her dreams, Kumba, a surly silverback who's in for a bit of a surprise when this modern and feisty newcomer walks into his life and literally turns it upside down. So let's get in on the act and find out who's aping who. In our crazy world, human beings live together, work together. It seems we just can't get enough of each other. Yet each one of us is an individual fighting for our place in the crowd. To make our mark, we need great social skills, intelligence and cunning. But where do these human characteristics come from? Our closest relatives are the great apes. And as we'll discover, humans aren't the only ones with complicated lives. Life seems as difficult for a great ape as it is for a human. How to get a date, how to win favors, how to make yourself look good. Apes want to get on in life just as much as we do, and they'll do almost anything to get ahead. This is where it all began, in Africa. Here lie clues to the roots of all human and great ape societies. To try to find out where our complicated human behavior comes from, Richard Wrangham is studying chimpanzees in the forests of Uganda. Chimps hunt and forage, just like early humans, and their lifestyle may help unravel the origins of our society. I think basically this is like being with our ancestors. The thing that we evolved from about five billion years ago was very like a chimpanzee. It was big and black and hairy. It was the size of a chimp. The chimp has the primitive characteristics. I think this is a time machine. We're going back five or six million years, and we're seeing something very similar to what our ancestors lived like. And it's a wonderful soap opera. Like all the best soap operas, this one has lots of different characters with tightly interwoven lives. Chimps can get by on their own, but they do better by working together. Catching a meal is a good example. The nimble red colobus monkey is a favorite chimpanzee food. It can usually dodge a single chimp by leaping out of danger. But avoiding a team of hunters is a very different matter. They're a real threat. The first chimp's job is to get the colobus on the run, while other chimps close in to block its path. Eventually, it runs straight into an ambush. Many creatures live in social groups, but chimps are special because they often form powerful bonds. With help from their friends, they achieve a lot more than they could on their own. But just like humans, not all great apes are equal. So how can we humans figure out who's who in the ape pecking order? Piecing together group dynamics can be very tricky for scientists working in the wild. Studying captive apes often brings quicker results. Appenhall Zoo in Holland is home to the largest group of captive gorillas in the world. There are 20 individuals here, living together pretty much as they would in the wild. It's a great chance to see what makes this ape society tick. The 
gorillas live in splendid isolation on an island in the middle of the park. They have enough privacy to act naturally, but they're close enough for primatologists to get an ape's eye view. Gorilla groups are ruled by a mature male, a silverback. The leader of this gang is Bongo, and in silverback terms, he's a great success. He protects his harem of females, and he's already fathered more than 20 children. A good silverback uh, he has to keep his group together, make sure that uh, other silverbacks don't try to steal females from him. And what is very important, I think, that, that uh, the other individuals can trust on the leading silverback, because he's the one which protects the group. So he's the one where you can count on when there's any danger. He warns the group when there's something going on. So he tells them when to move. He has to, he has to control the group in a way. One of Bongo's daughters is an adolescent called Binti. At eight years old, she's about to come of age. If she lived in the wild, it would be time to leave and start her own family with a different group of gorillas. To mirror what would happen in the wild, Binti's keepers must find her a new group. But Binti's quite a character, and they're anxious to make the right choice for her. The delicate role of matchmaker is played by the park's curator, Dr. Ken Gold. When you're making decisions on, on managing gorillas in captivity and, and how best to send animals to other zoos, um, for breeding purposes, you need to be aware of behavior and personality because these animals are very complex animals like humans and they have definite traits. Some are mo more sociable than others, some are more aggressive than others, and they might fit into certain situations better in captivity than other animals. So what about Binti? Has she got what it takes to move on? Binti is a very gregarious animal. Having grown up with lots of younger brothers and sisters, uh, she's had a very good um, environment to play in and learn from and grow up in. And she's also had several good female role models in the adults in the group who have been excellent mothers to all of their offspring. And so the chances are that she will be a perfect mother. But however outgoing you are, your first steps alone outside the family will be nerve-wracking. Well, she's lived here all her life and she's never been away from her group, so I'm sure it'll be somewhat stressful for her just to leave and be in a new surroundings with totally new animals. I mean, we all have to leave home eventually. Leaving home is also hard for those left behind. The night before Binti's due to go, Keeper Franz Kaiser comes to say goodbye. Hey, Binti. Is it? It's a little bit wet. A new group has been found for Binti in Amsterdam, and tomorrow she'll leave Appenhal to start a whole new life. <clears throat> Growing up brings similar hurdles for human beings and few things in life are as daunting as starting a new school. In the minefield of classroom politics, it's a case of who dares wins. For most of us, it's the first time we leave our comfort zone, the security of our home and family. Facing a world full of strangers can be terrifying, but it's a crucial milestone in our social development. At Appenhall, today's the day. It's 6.30 in the morning, and eight-year-old Binti has been mildly sedated, ready for her move to a new group. For Franz and his team, it's an emotional time, but everyone knows this is the right thing for Binti. When an animal leaves, certainly the first few days, I think will be very sad for her, for me also, but that's what happens in life of a gorilla. 
Before she goes, Binti is given a blood test to check for parasites and an eyelid injection for a TB test. She needs to be in good health to meet the new group in Amsterdam. If Binti gets on well with her new group, the chances are she'll stay with them for the rest of her life and never see her family again. It's a two-hour trip to Artis Zoo in Amsterdam. She may get a mixed reception at the other end. The artist group is very small and isolated, so its members have little social experience. If they decide to gang up on Binti, she could be in serious trouble. Kumba is the group's only male and 26 years old. He may be tall, dark and handsome, but he's yet to prove his virility. So far, he hasn't produced any children. Kumba has only two female companions at the moment. Shindi, 14, is a bit of a prima donna. She was raised by humans and hasn't had a grounding in gorilla behavior. She lived with her shy friend, Tafina, for nine years, until Kumba joined them about 12 months ago. But the trio has since got stuck in a rut, and the hope is that Binti's great social skills will breathe new life into the group. But how will young Binti handle a stranger twice her size with few social graces? It's Binti's first night in her new surroundings. The sights and smells are all foreign. Tomorrow may be the biggest challenge of her life when she comes face to face with Kumba. How will she know if he's friendly or wants to hurt her? How will she make herself popular with the group? How do apes cope with meeting strangers? Two innocent little girls. How old are these children? One of them hides the darkest secret. She's not a monster. In a case you won't believe. She's a textbook serial killer. A compelling law and order, 8.30 tonight. Then, a known child offender accused of a young boy's murder. This time, is he guilty? Or has panic convicted a wrong man? No one can handle crimes against children. SVU at 9.30 following Law and Order. Tonight on 10. Warning, the following scenes may offend some viewers. Enter the domain of the most notorious man-eater of all, larger than a minibus and weighing more than two tons. No other carnivore has the power to strike such deep terror into our souls. Silently moving through the ocean at more than 40 kilometers an hour, this majestic beast is one of the last great predators to roam the planet. Time Life and the BBC invite you to enter the hidden world of this mysterious creature with Great White Shark, the first title in the new Predators video collection. Venture beyond the cages and follow the Great White into the open ocean with footage that reveals its natural behavior as never before captured on film. Call 1-300-360-399 now to start your collection for only $14.95. Witness the ruthless tactics of this killing machine as it strikes with total surprise and devastating speed from the murky depths. Pay by credit card and we'll send you a second video, Crocodile, absolutely free. See how these modern-day dinosaurs are still the most successful freshwater predators on the planet. Other titles in the series reveal how these shrewd hunters choose their prey, stalk their victims, and move in for the kill. There's no minimum to buy. Cancel any time. Feel the fear of being hunted by nature's most vicious killers and learn that in the wild, only the strong survive. Call 1-300-360-399 now and start your Predator's Collection with Great White Shark for only $14.95. Pay by credit card and you'll also receive Crocodile absolutely free. That's almost $60 value for only $14.95. Call 1-300-360-399 now. They may all look alike to us, but every ape is one of a kind. Apes read each other's faces just as we do, to find out what another is thinking or feeling, 
and where they stand within the group. A unique study is questioning whether chimpanzees might actually be better at recognizing each other's faces than we are at reading other humans. Katrina is a chimpanzee with a remarkable talent. Five years ago, she was taught how to use a computer. In Atlanta, Dr. Lisa Parr is using a computer game to test how easily Katrina can recognize who's related to whom in the chimpanzee world. First, the computer flashes up a picture of a chimpanzee mother, a face Katrina has never seen before. Katrina has five seconds to study the picture. When the mother disappears, she's replaced by two younger chimps, only one of which is related to her. Although Katrina has never seen these faces either, she immediately moves the cursor towards the correct chimp on the right. Does this mean chimps can tell instantly who's related to whom in a group of strangers? Katrina was presented with many more new faces. 75% of the time, she matched mothers and sons correctly. Could we match human mothers and children this quickly? It may be a skill that was more useful to our human ancestors. Like chimps today, it was probably important to know which members of the group were related. After all, it's one of the secrets of successful social climbing. If an ambitious chimp knows an opponent has friends in high places, he may decide not to challenge him. But faces tell much more than who you are and where you belong. They can reveal what's going on beneath the surface including what you might be trying to hide. The pant hoot face, for example, is a greeting. The lips look like they're blowing a kiss. It may well share a past with our greeting kiss. The scream face reveals a mixture of fear and frustration, just like a toddler yelling for its mother. In the play face, the mouth is open, but the lips are covering the upper teeth. It's accompanied by a breathy sound, just like human laughter. This is a strange one, the fear grin. All the teeth are visible, but they're clenched together, more like a grimace than a grin. A fear grinning chimp wants others to know he's feeling vulnerable. Could this explain the toothy grin we often use when we're a bit nervous? On her computer, Katrina can recognize and match each of these expressions. So it seems that chimps can tell one kind of face from another and even understand what different faces might be saying. Very good, good job, good job. But how could this help them get on in life? Lisa Parr explains. Well, if I was an adolescent female chimpanzee and I wanted some desirable food that was possessed maybe by a more dominant animal or a, an offspring of a more dominant animal, I would approach submissively with a friendly signal. I would bare my teeth, be very submissive, and most often under those sorts of contexts, I would get a lot of food. Richard Wrangham has seen this kind of behavior in chimps in the wild. He also thinks they weigh each other up in more subtle ways, like humans do. The little glances of the eye seem to me what's so particularly human. And the closer you are, and when you can you look into their eyes and see the way they follow each other's gaze and react to being looked at by each other, then you think they're being very similar to the kind of human that is thinking all the time about what kind of relationships they have with those around them. In the forests of Uganda, Richard Wrangham has followed a group of 50 chimps for the past 12 years. Their leader is challenged every few years, about as often as a president. 
so just as in Washington, ambitious hopefuls are always lobbying with an eye to the future. Imoso, the current leader, is young and inexperienced, so he needs his right-hand man, Johnny. In the heat of the day, while the rest of the group is resting, Imoso is hard at work, keeping Johnny on his side. Here, Imoso is grooming Johnny, his ally. Johnny will probably return the favor in just a few seconds. Johnny here has grown up with Imoso. They're adolescents about the same age when we first came here 12 years ago. They're now in their mid to late 20s. And uh, Johnny is a very key ally for Imoso. He helped Imoso gain power. And they together were able to supplant the previous alliance. To stay in power, Imoso must keep his henchmen happy, but it's a gamble. Johnny himself would be more than willing to step into Imoso's shoes. Imoso's ability to survive depends on Johnny, and uh, Johnny will want to exploit any weakness, but he won't be able to do that until uh, they are very secure and not challenged by other alliances. So those are the sort of dynamics that we see going on when you look at grooming and some of the aggression that accompanies it during the day. You scratch my back and I'll scratch yours. But for chimpanzees, it's not just to get rid of parasites. Grooming is one of the tactics chimps use to make friends and to build up favors to call in later. This I wish I had a clothes dryer. Beginning next Monday, a drama about the choices we make, the people we meet, and the secrets we share. Ten's new series, The Secret Life of Us, 8.30 next Monday on Ten. It's easy to tell who has vitamins for breakfast. <laughs> They're the ones with an edge for life. Vitabreeds from Uncle Toby's. So you'd like a nice warm feather and down quilt this winter, but you don't want to pay $200, do you? Premium feather and down quilts, not $200, not $200. It's box stitched, so the filling doesn't move. It's classed as a four blanket warm, and it's not $200. It's four blanket warm, then it's not $200, not $200. Queen size for just $89.95. It's our biggest ever quilt sale. The Corn News latest catalogue out now. Thousands more red hot specials with big savings to warm your heart. Check the latest and greatest in your letterbox or grab one in store. The Corn News, home is where the heart is. Love it at the Corn News. It feels so incredibly healthy now. When my curls get out of control, I can tame them with just my fingers. How did it happen? Pantene Ultra V System. The thick, creamy pro-vitamin B5 formula keeps improving your hair quality, making it twice as smooth. Your hair feels so healthy, you could control it this easily. The world's best hair at your fingertips? Yes, please. Pantene Ultra V. Well, I woke up this morning You were on my the mouth-watering Hungry Jack's flame-grilled Whopper. Makes you hungry just looking at it, doesn't it? The burgers are better at Hungry Jack's. No! What are you doing here? Naomi, these shots will make me a fortune. What are you going to do with the money? Invest it in shares. That's costly. Nah, not when you trade online with TD Waterhouse. You have to be an expert. Nah. This site's good for all types of investors. Hey, Claudia's in room 403. In Amsterdam, Binti the gorilla is about to find out what it's like to be the new girl on the block. After a night alone, she enters the meeting area. Prospective mate Kumba is kept behind bars for the moment, and the other two females are well out of sight. So Binti and Kumba can concentrate on each other. B-5 
Vinti is nervous, but she's also curious. Kumbo watches as she explores his kingdom. There's no one to run to. She's not uh, used to, to be uh, in such a situation that she could handle everything on her own. Normally she got protected by her mother as well, or, or uh, uh, by uh, other members of the group. And this she has to manage on her own, and that's a new experience for her, and that's sometimes a little bit scary. Binti can smell the other two females, but right now their cages are empty. The third cage, however, is occupied by her blind date, Kumba. As Binti approaches, Kumba gets bashful and ducks out of sight. But as soon as the coast is clear, he can't take his eyes off her. It's an endless game of cat and mouse. After six months of planning, the keepers decide it's time for the couple to meet. If Kumba takes a dislike to his new companion, he could do her a lot of damage. Strutting on the tips of his knuckles, Kumba pumps himself up to look as big and strong as possible. While the keepers look on, Binti flees, and Kumba follows. Behind the scenes, it doesn't sound good. The tables have turned. Now Binti is chasing Kumba. His bravado seems to have vanished. Kumba may be on home turf, but Binti's got much more experience of guerrilla protocol. Binti appears to be pretty confident. She can't afford to push her luck though, and she knows it. Time out. Binti takes refuge where Kumba can't follow. Round one has gone better than expected. The first two, three minutes are actually the important. What, what is his reaction about uh, how, how will he show his dominance over, over Binti? And he acted on a normal way. His interaction with Binti were slow down a bit, so he's gonna sit and relax a bit. And that's also give Binti the time to think about the situation. Kumba seems to soften and reaches out to touch Binti. He lulls her into a false sense of security. This outburst tells her it's time to show a bit of respect, and Binti crouches submissively. Kumba is showing who's boss, and Binti knows the score. She knows what a big male is, because she was in a group uh, with her father, and also with uh, a, a while with two almost adult uh, half-brothers. So she knows what a silverback is, so, so she needs, she's not scared of a big gorilla. It's more uh, his acting, his way of acting, that could scare her. But he acts normal, so there's no reason to be scared. Without warning, Kumba goes a bit further and bites Binti. But 
this time, Binti won't kowtow to Kumba. In fact, she gives as good as she gets. Sometimes it's necessary to show one of the females this is not allowed and he gives a dominance bite and it's mostly in this area that's a normal place to make a dominant bite and it's actually it's not a real bite it's only a few scratches no real damage for a gorilla it's not serious it's nothing it's a stormy first date but they're doing pretty well so what's the next step next step will be what's the reaction of the other females and what's the reaction of course of binti to the other females yeah. so if the females are aggressive then you've got a, a different situation as when they are friendly despite the rough and tumble binti seems to be falling for kumba's macho charms he plays hard to get and keeps her at arm's length, acting indifferent. But those sideways glances give him away. His love in the air for Binti. Kumba's stagnant sex life could be looking up. He may soon have more options than he can handle. Discover the secret to the perfect burrito. Mm. It's the spices. <laughs> Old El Paso, celebrate with you. latest catalogue out now. Thousands more red hot specials with big savings to warm your heart. Check the latest and greatest in your letterbox or grab one in store. The Corn News. Home is where the heart is. Love it at the Corn News. So now when I go to hospital, will I have to pay a gap or not? That really depends on your health fund policy and your doctors. But overall, the majority of doctors' services in hospital are now gap free. And the number is growing every day. That's good. You should check with your own fund about how they're closing the gap. It makes your hospital cover even better value. OK, I will. Closing the gap. Authorised by the Commonwealth Government, Canberra. Oven fresh pizza tastes best. Crispy crusts, moist, tasty toppings. Now you can enjoy it at home with the introduction of Domino's Hot Cell, Australia's first electronic hot bag. Got the hots for a hotter, better pizza? Call Domino's now. Sold! 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 But wait, there's more! At Discount City Carpets, thousands of metres of floor coverings are arriving daily. For the best deals on rugs, carpets, vinyls, timber flooring and ceramics in the latest styles and colours, get into Discount City Carpets and save hundreds of dollars during their container stock clearance. Just arrived. Timber flooring, not $49, just $24.95. Carpet from a low $5 a square metre. Vinyls, cheap. Rugs, save up to 40%. Discount City Carpets, super stores and super warehouse. Get in quick before they're sold! Because there's such a short time between getting home and going to bed. Let Maggie help you make the most of it. There's one great ape society where the mating game is played by alternative rules. In the Congo rainforest, females have more control. And the group live a very different lifestyle. 
Bonobos are closely related to chimps and humans, but they're more laid back than either. They live in groups of more than 100, which isn't easy, but they smooth the way with sex. For bonobos, sex is about much more than reproduction. It's a kind of currency that can be used to buy favors. When there's competition over food, bonobos will usually make love, not war. Sex, and lots of it, is the key to bonobo politics. These hairy hippies have only been known outside Africa since 1929, and they're very rare. At Plankendal Animal Park in Belgium, Dr. Linda van Elsacker has been studying a captive group of bonobos for the past 10 years. Her work has helped us to understand more about their unique way of life. At first sight, bonobos look very similar to chimpanzees, but they have telltale pink lips, neatly parted hair, and are smaller and slimmer. The much more important difference, however, is which sex has the upper hand. Zeta has been leader of this group for 10 years. Although she isn't bigger or stronger than the males, she's still the boss. In each group, the top-ranking animal is a female. This is not to say that all females are uh, in the hierarchy above all the males, but the leader of the group is in all cases a female. The highest in the hierarchy is uh, Zeta, the alpha female, followed by uh, Desmond, the oldest male, and then we have the two other adult females, Hermine and Hortense, followed by the younger animals. The reason why they are able to do so is because they form alliances. So females support each other in their contests against males, and the immediate benefits of that are that the females have for example, access to food first. The members of this sisterhood groom each other and share the babysitting duties to reinforce their bonds. And to show respect to elders and betters in the group, they go for some real in-your-face behavior called peering. Peering is very closely looking at each other. Most of the time it's one animal looking at the face of another animal while this animal is eating or grooming a third animal. And this peering only occurs in the direction from subordinate to more dominant animal. So if you see an animal peering at another animal, then you definitely know that the one who is peering is the subordinate to the other one. If you have looked at common chimpanzee groups and afterwards have looked at bonobo groups, then they really act more peaceful, more diplomatic. It's all more subtle. Although bonobos are fairly free in their sex lives, the females still control which males they get pregnant by, just like human females try to. Every girl needs options. It's what gives the mating game its edge. A bit of healthy competition from a new arrival means everyone has to make a little more effort. New relationships form and old favourites are cast aside. The foundations of the group can shift. In Amsterdam, Binti seems relaxed about the first stage of her move. But she's blissfully unaware of the next challenge, meeting Kumba's other females. How will they react to the new girl? Females are the core of guerrilla society, and the keepers know that if they don't like Binti, they could make life very unpleasant. The hope is that Binti will shake things up and kickstart Kumba into breeding. Binti certainly seems interested in some female company, but will they share her enthusiasm? After all, to them, she represents competition. Kumba may have to decide where his loyalties lie. The moment of truth. Kumba's females are allowed back in. 
Almost immediately, Binti approaches Shindi, the elder of the two females. Once again, Binti seems to have no fear. She just wants to strike up a friendship. But Shindi isn't interested, and so Binti tries with Dafina. It's up to Kumba to set the ground rules, but so far, he just keeps watch from the sidelines. Dafina and Binti are getting on fine, but now Kumba seems to be feeling left out. Suddenly, he goes for Binti, but once again, he gets more than he bargained for. Binti turns the tables, and her new friend, Dafina, steps in to defuse the situation. There were signs of stress, of course, but not, it's not unusual stress. For the situation, it's normal that there is a bit of stress, because it's a new situation, and there is a little bit of aggression against each other. When they uh, make <coughs> that noise, it's not good. And when they, <coughs> that's a good noise, yeah? That's the difference yeah, from the two uh, most things you heard from them. Yeah? When it is <coughs> then it's uh, not allowed to do things with them. Yeah? And there was another sound that was from Binti that was more on a high level, like whoop. That's more a bit of stress about a little bit confused in her head. What's, what's going to happen? What, what I have, have to do? And that's because of her age, because she's young. <laughs> Binti's gutsy approach has worked. The first steps were made by Binti in the first 10 minutes. Then later you saw that also the other two females make some movements to Binti, but uh, everything went very well. Most important of all, Binti seems to have won Kumba's heart. He likes Binti, yeah. he showed that a couple of times, so uh, he's very... Uh, proud of that he's got a new female and he's doing his job as a leader so when there is something happening between the females then you see that he's involved with it so he's not a, a passive silverback it's his group so when there is something happens he's the boss life in kumba's small community is looking a lot more interesting than before binti's arrival her energy has already worked wonders. But no one can afford to relax just yet. The game of social climbing will continue to keep everyone on their toes. When you're on the inn, yep. like yeah. me, yeah. when you're on the inn, <laughs> you have to uphold the line between the ins and the outs. I think you go into Hollywood and you drop the name Uncle Arthur. <laughs> <laughs> the panel, 9.30 Wednesday. Guess who's smartest when it comes to the most efficient use of energy? Rivas, winner of the Galaxy Awards for energy efficient ducted heating. Cosmos Gas and Electrical 20th birthday million dollar clearance sale has blasted off with down to earth dollar saving specials. Top of the range NEC TVs, Sips and Laundry Super Specials, Life's Good with LG TVs and VCRs. Now's the time for a Kelvinator air conditioner or a Westinghouse frost free fridge. And guess whose mum can afford a whirlpool? If it's from Cosmos Gas and Electrical Henley Beach Road, Tynesville, the savings are out of this world. It's Hi-Fi Acoustic's biggest stock tank sale ever. From home theatre to DVD players and speakers, 15 to 50% off the lot. Hi-Fi Acoustic's Heinmeier Square. We sell excitement. After creating one of the most versatile vehicles on the road, we asked our designers to create one of the most versatile vehicles offered. The new Scenic RX-4 with permanent four-wheel drive and traction control. Inside, it's pure scenic, with innovative storage and seating options. Renault, 
We don't just make cars. We create cars. It's big! Dreamland's biggest ever stock tax sale is on now! A half a million dollars worth of stock must be cleared. Save up to 20%, 30%, 40%, even up to 50%! On mattresses, ensembles, beds, bedroom furniture and more. All the leading brands to clear. There's floor stock and warehouse stock. Some stock is marked, but out it goes at prices not to be repeated. It's big! A bit quick or you'll miss out! Do you reckon they know what they're missing out on? They wouldn't have a clue by the look of them. Four and twenty. The great Australian taste. The forecast for Truscott Hi-Fi's winter sale is no highs. Just lots of low prices across all stores. TX 68 centimetre stereo TVs, $100 off. Sony 6 head stereo VCRs, $30 off. Itachi Digital 8 camcorders, $200 off. Sony DVD players save $33. AEWA 400 watt home theatre systems save $46. So it's cold nights with hot prices during the day. Trust got Hi Fi, Adelaide's lowest prices with up to 24 months interest free terms. Orangutan doesn't seem to belong to a complex society. Instead, it has often been regarded as a loner, less sophisticated than the social apes. But a startling new discovery in Sumatra suggests this image might not be the whole story. Two years ago, a few orangutans were spotted travelling in a group, and even more surprising, they were using tools made of twigs to get honey from stingless bee nests. Everyone knows the sociable chimps use tools, but they have generations of communal knowledge behind them. When primatologist Carol Van Schaik discovered these orangutans, he was amazed to see them adapting tools to suit the job in hand. What you see is that an animal will, will get a tool in its mouth, or a stick in the tool, so it'll move it up and down, probably having to pierce the nest and get to the honey. Then it'll come out. You actually see the honey sitting on the tool, and it licks it up like this. In many cases, it actually then turns it around so it can get some more honey off while it's working again at the, at the hole. But in this case, it's obvious that this tool is much too big. You can't really do a lot of fine manipulation that way. So it'll probably turn around, make a smaller tool like this, etc., until it's had enough honey uh, or there isn't much more left. These orangutans use different tools for different foods. But did they work out how to make each tool themselves, or did they copy it? It is almost certain that animals during their development learn to use tools by observing it in others. So they're learning it socially. This is the first group of sociable orangutans ever recorded in the wild. For younger members in particular, the advantages of group living are clear. We've seen animals, younger animals, adolescents, juveniles, extremely eager to observe from very close distance the feeding techniques of others, including tool use, of course. And you can, you can see that they're absorbing it. They want to learn. And that's probably how it spread. So here we have a population where the opportunities for social learning are much more frequent than in other places. And as a result, if something is imported or invented, it'll stick around because it's, it's being transmitted reliably. Even if it goes extinct in one community, there will always be immigrants with the trick that can bring it in and it'll, it'll come back. So perhaps it's time to rewrite orangutan history. This extraordinary group lends support to what some researchers have long suspected, that in the past, orangutans may have been sociable, like other apes. Why they switched to a solitary lifestyle, no one knows for sure. 
As their habitat slowly dwindled, they may have had to separate to find enough food. But a more sociable lifestyle offers a much better chance of survival because it's such a good way to share accumulated skills. Most apes don't have bright ideas on their own. Invention itself must be exceedingly rare. And it sort of initially makes you think that they really aren't as smart as we thought they were. But of course, if you think about it, invention in humans is really very rare too. And almost all the artifacts that I use during the day, I could not have invented myself. Uh, we're just better at accumulating these inventions and building on top of inventions than, than the great apes were. Many humans spend their lives in a world full of technology they didn't invent and don't understand. Our cities were created by knowledge passed down over thousands of years, knowledge refined and adapted by each generation. Humans got where they are today by working together and helping each other is something we can see in all great ape societies. But what makes humans different is the impact of our success on those around us, including our closest relatives. Great ape numbers are falling all over the world as we invade their forests. What's the point of getting to the top of the tree if your society is destroyed at the roots? By preserving their home in the wild, we can ensure a better future for all of us. Two innocent little girls, one with a secret you won't believe. She's a textbook serial killer. A compelling law and order, next on 10. Look at this family deal. You get your choice of two large McDonald's burgers plus two cheeseburgers, nine McNuggets and a family server fries for only $12.95. What a meal! What a deal! That's my boy. Why do we choose Seabus for our super? Simple. There's no fuss, and no charges to my business. And Seabus has delivered strong investment returns. Over the past five years, Seabus has returned an average of more than 10% a year to members, or over five times the rate of inflation. And all the profits belong to members. Why line someone else's pockets with my retirement savings? Phone 1-800-621-123 to find out how an industry super fund like Seabus looks after employers as well as employees. It's the super of the future. Stop looking, stop rushing all over town, stop phoning, stop everything! Go straight to Vista Blinds for the lowest prices guaranteed. Call 13 16 13. That's 13 16 13. Please welcome our newest Australian citizen. Right now, there are over 900,000 permanent residents in Australia who are eligible to take out Australian citizenship. On behalf of the people of Australia, we'd like to extend an invitation this the year we celebrate our centenary of Federation to you to join us. To find out more, phone our information line or visit our website. There's never been a better time to become an Australian citizen. Authorised by the Commonwealth Government, Canberra. Better product review with Michelle Downs. Finally, an Australian made and owned range of laundry products that really work. Not only do Big Kev's laundry products leave your washing smelling fresh and clean, they also restore brightness and add extra whiteness for brighter brights and whiter whites. Take a look at the full range of Big Kev's laundry products from powders, liquids, concentrates and fabric softeners. Big Kev's products available in the laundry aisle at your local supermarket. Better product review makes your shopping a breeze. Now's the time to buy it better electrical. Save $100 on this Sharp camcorder, just $868. Save $30 on this Philips 6-head Hi-Fi VCR, only $298. Best price, best service, guaranteed. 
You, you can choose back. your friends. That's what's called a uh, basketball pet. But you can't choose your family. We're concerned about our son. There's the girl, of course. What girl? Night Dirty Wednesday. But what will it take to get you to relinquish your hold on my son? What? Get ready to meet the parents. Mr. Stevens. Thousand dollars? Things are about to get hot. What do you want me to do? Sit here and fiddle while Rome burns? And parental guidance is not recommended. Let's quit torturing ourselves and let's start doing it already. Ed returns 8.30 Wednesday on 10. In Amsterdam, Binti is outside enjoying the warmer weather four months after her introduction. Kumba has much to be pleased about. He's held his group together through the rocky patch of Binti's arrival, and the future is looking good. Now he's making his mark as a leader, and Kumba's ready to prove himself as a mate. Binti, too, is growing up. Her remarkable personality has brought out the best in everyone around her, including Kumba. She should be a very successful mother. The next generation of social climbers may soon be on their way. I hope you're enjoying Who's Aping Who. I'll be back in a fortnight for the conclusion of this magnificent series when we blast off and travel to the final frontier with the original space jockeys. The Chimponauts, brave pioneers or helpless guinea pigs? We'll find out next time. Until then, good night.